Uh, what are some things that you love and hate about med school? So things I like about medical school, um, I really like the friends that I've made in medical school. Things I don't like about medical school um, have to do with like... the. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the podcast. My name is Jericho. Uh, today I'm super excited to be here with Mohammed. He's going into his third year at McGovern Medical School. Um, he's going to talk about his life in medical school. Um, but yeah, Mohammed, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, excited to be here. Hopefully we can have a nice discussion about uh, being a medical student, what it's like, and, and the pros and cons of it. So one of the first questions I always like to lead off these things with is uh, what made you want to pursue medicine in the first place? So I think this is a question that, you know, pre-meds, med students, and even physicians always get asked. And I think that your answer starts to adapt, um, you know, as you go along your journey. But to a certain extent, it holds some core values. And for me, the reason to become a doctor has always been to help people. Um, and the reason why medicine is that it, it's one of the most interesting ways that you can help someone. Um, people can have uh, like a, a variety of different issues that they don't understand. And in that moment of them not understanding, you um, have trained and have learned and have the ability to make an impact and help them in that moment of need. And I, I think that that's so satisfying. Um, and growing up, you know, my dad was a physician and seeing him love what he did uh, really made me want to pursue it um, and I've never felt like I want to do anything else um, so it's it's been a very straightforward path for me it wasn't um, an enlightening moment or anything like that uh, it's just been this constant desire to help people uh, in a way that that I enjoy so I wanted to dive straight into med school now um, obviously right as we're recording this right now it's winter break but you had MS2 um, the year prior so during the semester, what was your day-to-day -day life like with studying or, um, you know, just give us a picture of what your, I guess, your regular schedule was like during the semester. Um, I have to say that um, I don't know how different my life would have looked um, if we didn't have COVID. I think MS2 would primarily be the same. I mean, MS2 is really like you kind of sit at home and study the whole time. Um, but even then this answer can vary across like different medical students. But for me personally, um, I like to study at home. So I didn't watch much lecture anyways. And so, you know, I was always at home um, studying from my own resources. I'd kind of wake up around uh, six-ish, do a little bit of exercise, finish my morning prayers, then, you know, get into studying. Um, but really, if I'm being honest, I, I probably only study like one or two hours a day max. Um, and, and that's a very different answer that you get from other medical students. Um, some people literally study from, you know, nine to five, if not even longer. Um, it, it all depends on your goals and, 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 and what you want to do. Uh, for me, I realized that I was getting 90% of the outcome studying one to two hours a day. And the rest of my day, I was able to focus on other, other things I like to do um, and other endeavors that I'm involved in. So that's kind of how I set up my day. Okay. Um, speaking of that, how do you balance schoolwork and life in med school? So I think one of the biggest things that people don't really think about when it comes to like having a good work-life balance in medical school is it's really important where you choose to go to school. Um, and so for me, um, I got lucky. Um, I got into a school in Houston. I lived in Houston, you know, for the vast majority of my uh, life, like the past 15 years I've been in Houston. So my friends, my family, my social circle, everyone's in Houston. So, you know, when I came to med school, it's not like I had to make new friends, I had to make, you know, new things to do. Um, really, it was like med school kind of just took up its portion of its time. And the rest of the time, I was still in my normal life. Um, I could still hang out with my friends whenever I wanted. Um, and so that was very, very convenient. And, and I advise people, you know, whenever you're considering your med school, it's easy to go after prestige sometimes but really the, the number 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 one and number two are, are cost and location um, they really help determine a lot of your happiness um, in medical school like you could be miserable somewhere else even though you're like you're telling yourself yeah you know it's going to pay off when I get into good residency but like you can get into a good residency from from a lot of medical schools and uh, you know location and cost are, are two really really big factors I, I, I encourage applicants to focus on
Okay. So you say you study for like two hours a day. And, you know, obviously the, the answer is different for everyone. But I've, I've been hearing med students talk about they're studying all day, all the time. How do you manage to study all you know, how do you manage to fit all that studying into that two hour fr time frame? Is it just like a different way of studying or would you say you're doing it more efficiently than other people or something like that? How, I definitely how does that work? pretty efficient. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, like you kind of got to go into it. Like you got to know what you want to do. You can't just dilly dally right. like, all right, should I watch this lecture or should I watch this <laughs> lecture? Because I mean, there's a, there's so much stuff that you can learn and there's so many different ways that you can learn it. Like you could watch five videos from like five different resources on a single topic. Um, but there's not really a reason to, um, and med students will also, uh, kind of get into this habit of like always talking about how much they have to study and complain, but like it's, it, it's blown up quite a bit. Um, I think that medical school is extremely reasonable. It's probably the easiest part of our medical training. Um, you know, it's more stressful when you're pre-med and you don't have medical school in your hand, but like when you're in medical school, at least, you know, you're going to be a doctor for the most part. Um. And, 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 it's, and it's everyone's studying the exact same thing. So it's like the curriculum is very, very standardized. Um, you know, you have to prepare for step one. You know, you have to prepare for step two. Uh, it, it's, it's very straightforward. Um, so if you know what you want to do uh, and how you're going to do it, then it's very easy. For me, for example, you know, I don't watch a lot of my, my in-house school lectures just because, you know, they're 40, 50 minutes on a topic that can be explained in 15 minutes from another resource. So I'll take... You know, uh, I'll watch like five or six videos, uh, depending on what module I'm in. Say, for example, I'm in the reproductive module and I'll be watching like one block or, or one kind of subject of the pathophysiology in one day. And it'll be like, you know, a total of like one hour of watch time. And then, you know, you can two times speed it, 30 minutes watch time of total lecture. And then, you know, practice questions and things take up the rest of the time. Uh, so as long as you know, you're very deliberate about what you're going to do in that fixed amount of time. Um, I think it's extremely reasonable. Okay. Um, do you have any tips for surviving? You went through MS2. I guess you're you're done with step two studying, I, I would assume. So actually, um, I'm about to enter my dedicated step one period. Uh, I'm going to be taking the test April 2nd. But in terms of doing well during MS2, um, it, it's very similar to what I said earlier. Um, since everything, at least in, at my school, we study in an organ-based, organ system-based uh, curriculum, you know what you have to cover in a certain amount of time. Um, and like I said, you can use any resource that you want to acquire that information. There's sketchy medical, there's boards and beyond, there's osmosis, there's traditional lectures. But in the cardio block, you need to know cardiovascular embryology, pharmacology, pathophysiology, um, a little bit of anatomy, you have to cover those topics. Uh, as long as you do that and you do the related questions, then you're gonna pass the exam. So um, that's kind of the baseline uh, that, that you can kind of use to succeed. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some things that you love and hate about med school? Um, studying or you know everything else to do with just being a student in med school? So things I like about medical school, um, I really like the friends that I've made in medical school. You know, I feel like they're people that I can relate to um, quite a bit, more so than, you know, in, in any other college class. Even though some of the classmates I have in medical school, um, you know, kind of came with me from undergrad at UH. Uh, so that's been great as well to continue those friendships. Uh, I also really enjoy the content, obviously, um, for the most part. There's some subjects that I don't find as interesting, but... In general, I like everything. Uh, I'm very interested in it all. Uh, I'm here to learn as much as I can, and, and being able to learn what you want um, is it, it's pretty great. You know, there's very uh, well. There's still a little bit of stuff that's like minimal utility, um, but like for the most part, you're learning things that you really really uh, enjoy, uh, and so that's great. Things I don't like about medical school um, have to do with like the bureaucracy. Uh, of some things, and that's gonna be in any career, in any field, at any medical school. Um, sometimes there's just stuff, like the required mandatory wellness lectures, and then, and then obviously I hate having to pay so much for medical school. Like nobody, nobody enjoys paying like the exorbitant amount of tuition. Um, but that's why, at least in Texas, it's pretty great. Uh, In-state tuition is, is really, really a blessing compared to other programs. So don't take that for granted. Um, 
definitely uh, go to the cheapest medical school you can. I do have this one question. Um, if you were to change anything about like the med school curriculum or like the med school training process, is there anything you would change about it or anything that maybe could be improved? Oh man, that's a big question. Uh, so I'm, I'm part of the curriculum committee in my school. And so we, we talk about these kind of things a lot. Um, one of the biggest things that I, I think can change is uh, the preclinical phase um, can really be one year, I think. Uh, and, and some schools are taking that route. The downside is that you kind of gloss over a lot more information, but the reality is I think that that information that gets glossed over is not necessarily highest yield in terms of like uh, using it during your career. Like you might have to gloss over a lot of like the detailed biochemistry, but, uh, and, and you might forget a lot of that since you cram it into a shorter period of time. But since you get an additional year of training in the clinical environment, or some schools do what, what they have, have like a rich enrichment year in the middle where you get to do like a research year or, or really anything you want. I think that that's really, really valuable. Um, because medical training kind of locks you in. So giving you the opportunity to pursue something else that you enjoy for a fixed amount of time, that you have protected time. Uh, and a lot of residency has, especially surgical residencies generally have like protected time, but to have that in medical school is also really, really great. So I think a structure in which you would have one year preclinical, um, a traditional core clinical year, uh, followed by a, a kind of do what you want year, uh, academic development uh, year, and then closing it off with, uh, a, a, and really the fourth year I think could potentially be optional. You should, could maybe go straight into residency. Uh, some programs are also doing that. I think NYU is kind of leading the forefront on that, um, which I think is wonderful because if, if there's someone who knows what they want to do, then get them into training because as soon as you're in residency, that's where the real, uh, you know, the most specific, most applicable learning is going to happen. And so to be able to spend more time in residency, I think is, is really great. So definitely more, you know, emphasize the clinical aspect and actually being in those healthcare kind of settings rather than just like learning from the textbook, I guess is, is what you're trying to say. Yeah. To sum it up. Yeah. I think that that's a good summary that okay. it reduced the amount of like textbook learning and increased the amount of on hand uh, clinical learning. Yeah. Okay. What are some of the, I know you're not like, you know, of course, we're not like the deans of our medical school or anything like that, but just like hypothetically, well, I, you know, if you were the dean of a med school, what do you think are some of the most important things for med students to learn, I guess, um, you know, becoming physicians and applying that knowledge in the real world? What, what are some of the most important skills that they should have? So as a dean, um, I think there are some great examples out there. Um, one of the, the most important thing to learn as a medical student, I, I think is, is good judgment. Um, you know, there was just a, a, a thread I was reading on Twitter earlier by some surgeons and they were talking about what's, what's the most difficult thing to train trainees in. And overwhelmingly the answer was good judgment. And, and I think that's, that holds true for medical students as well because you can teach someone or you can get them to learn, you know, almost any fact. Um, you can get them to learn professionalism to a certain extent. But to have good judgment um, and really think about what's best, for, what's, what's best for the patient at all times, uh, that's a difficult trait to develop and teach, but I think it's probably the most important, especially in, in something like surgery where really you need to decide what the best option is for the patient, whether or not that patient should have an operation, and then what type of operation should that patient have. Um, those, those sorts of things are difficult to teach, um, but important to learn. Okay. Um, so I guess to end things off here, um, I do have this one last question. Um, if you could talk to your undergrad self, um, what, is our, what are some things that you would tell yourself about the pre-med or uh, medical school journey? If I could talk back to myself, uh, not too far long ago, um, I would probably say that even, even these uh, these years in medical school, they're a very small snapshot in our entire career. Um, so not to get hung up on, on things like, you know, trying to get a hundred on every single test, like 
in, in the large scheme of things, these things are all very small. Even four years, is, it's a tiny portion of your career. No one will, will really remember uh, for the tiny uh, accomplishments that you might that you you know you might get during your career. Really focus on on the longevity of it. What do you want to accomplish in the next 10, 20 years? Um, and focus on that uh, because it'll keep you driven. It'll keep you focused. And uh, eventually you'll get to where you want to be as long as you know where you want to go. It's just like, like I was saying earlier with the studying, like you can do in one or two hours if you know exactly what you want to do. Um, but for medical school, don't just think about your next um, test or your next block or, or, or step one or don't let two years of your life go into preparing for one test like that's such a small like one test is it, it's going to mean nothing in the, in the span of your total career so fo keep your end end goal in focus would be my uh, piece of advice to my former self